Hello my friends, Mac here. In this video, we're gonna be doing a deep dive on how to get to Katmai National Park and Preserve. Being that the park is inaccessible by roads, it can take a little bit more strategy and planning to figure out how to get there. Though there are many different lodges in the park, we're gonna be focusing on the most developed and visited area in the park called Brooks Camp. I'm gonna be sharing how to get there by plane, by boat, how to stay overnight, food options, as well as a bunch of other things that you can do while you're there so you can make the most of your visit. Before we get into the details, we wanted to let you know that this video was made with support from our friends over at REI. Being an REI co-op member is now better than ever. Members get to enjoy free shipping and a larger discount on shop services, rentals, and exclusive gear. My personal favorite is that members get access to Resupply. Resupply is a program that allows us to buy and trade in gear in store and online so we can keep perfectly good gear out of landfills, reducing our footprint. When you join, REI will make a $5 donation to the REI Cooperative Action Fund, which supports justice, equality, and belonging for everyone in the outdoors. Owen and I have proudly been REI co-op members since 2011, and we couldn't be more honored to have their support. Katmai National Park and Preserve is located on the Alaska Peninsula, about 290 miles southwest of Anchorage and is inaccessible by road. Katmai was established as a national monument in 1918 to protect its rich volcanic history. However, it was left greatly undeveloped and seldom visited due to its remote location until the 1950s. After a series of boundary expansions, the present Katmai National Park and Preserve was established in 1980. Today, Katmai National Park and Preserve protects 9,000 years of human history and is an important habitat for sockeye salmon and the over 2,200 brown bears that rely on them. But this is what this park is famous for. If you're anything like me, you grew up seeing old National Geographic footage of Brooks Falls and its fishing bears and have longed to see it ever since. Brooks Falls is located in the Brooks Camp region of the park. Every summer, the bears of this area gather at the Brooks River to fish for sockeye salmon that are on their way to their spawning grounds in Brooks Lake. It's a spectacular scene unlike any other in the world, and I can personally say that it's well worth the time, effort, and money to see it for yourself. If you're wanting to maximize your bear viewing at Brooks Falls, the most number of bears can typically be seen in the months of July and September. Without further ado, here's how you get there. For our trip, we booked our flights through Katmai Air and left from Anchorage. In total, we had a flight from Anchorage to King Salmon, then a float plane from King Salmon into Brooks Camp. In total, our flights cost $950 round trip per person. Alternatively, you can book your own flight into King Salmon and then just take a Katmai Air flight to get you the rest of the way into the park. However, when we personally were looking, we were unable to find a flight that would work that wouldn't also require overnight lodging in King Salmon. Katmai Air was friendly and easy to work with, and we would recommend them to anybody who's planning on leaving from the Anchorage area. The nice thing about planning your trip around Anchorage is if you're coming from the lower 48 or really anywhere else in the world, you're already going to be arriving at the Anchorage International Airport where our flights left from. Alternatively, if you are there with a vehicle, there's plenty of safe parking for you at the International Airport. You can also leave from Homer, Alaska. Being that Owen and I personally didn't go this route, we reached out to our friends, Evan and Melanie from Out of This Fan to ask them about their experience from leaving from Homer. I also just wanted to make sure that I was passing on factual information. They chartered a plane using stellar air service out of Homer. The good thing about Homer is there's actually a ton of independent pilots that you can call around and get quotes from for this exact flight just to make sure you can do some comparison to see what the best option is going to be for you. But Evan and Melanie paid $2,800 for a direct flight all the way into Brooks Camp. The plane seated four passengers and that total price was actually divided between all four of the passengers, bringing it to $700 each person round trip. 
They said that they spoke to and planned their entire trip directly with the pilot. This is going to be an obvious benefit of working with a private charter because then you can kind of be involved in the whole planning process. In total, their flight was two hours to Brooks Camp, and then when they arrived, they had planned a pickup location and time for their departure, this being because there's no service in the park. In the end, I think that either flight location is a great option. It all just kind of depends on where you'll be leaving from when you plan to go to Katmai. Thank you so much to Evan and Melanie for being so generous with your insight. We really appreciate you. And we'll be linking their YouTube channel and Instagram in the description of this video below so you can check them out. You can also take a ferry to Katmai. We obviously didn't do this, but I think it's a really cool way to potentially see the surrounding area leading up to Brooks Camp. Just the ferry costs $275 round trip out of King Salmon. If you're wanting to go through the water taxi service to also book your flights for the cost of $925, that'll include your flight as well as your connecting ferry from King Salmon. The ferry operates from June 1st to September 25th and the ride takes about 45 minutes each way. For more information about the ferry and actually all of these different travel methods, we've made a blog post and we will link it in the description below. During our stay in Brooks Camp, Owen and I camped in the campground that's located inside of an electric fence. To get reservations, we went through recreation.gov. The permitting process for the campground opens up at the beginning of every calendar year, and this year it happened to open up on January 5th. Peak season dates get snatched up really quickly, so you'll want to be online early and you'll want to be fast when they go live. Full disclosure, we actually didn't get our first choice, but we got there. That's all that matters. The fee for Brooks Camp Campground is $12 per person per night with a maximum number of six people per permit. Then for the shoulder season, the camp price is reduced to $6 a person a night. Evan and Melanie went much later in the season than we did, and they went without campground reservations. However, because it was in the shoulder season, there was a lot more availability. So if you aren't able to secure any camp spots earlier in the season, maybe it's worth checking in a little bit later in the season to see if there's any availability. Brooks Camp also has a sports lodge that offers accommodations, meals, guided sport fishing, Valley of 10,000 Smokes bus tours, and flight sing tours. Everything they offer is a la carte. Owen and I inquired about staying one night in the lodge, hoping to extend our trip by a single day. The lodge offers accommodations for the tune of $850 a night. Every room is the same and sleeps four people. Needless to say, Owen and I did not spend the night in the lodge. Meals at the lodge are your only food option other than bringing food yourself. The meals range in a variety of prices based on the meal of the day it is. So for instance, adult pricing is $17 for breakfast and $40 for dinner. And then for children, it's $12 for breakfast and $23 for dinner. Owen and I brought all of our food and mostly just ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches during our stay in Katmai National Park because it was a splurge for us to be there in the first place. Owen and I did, however, treat ourselves to one celebratory dinner at the lodge before we knew the price. So when I went up to pay for our two $40 dinners, I won't lie to you, I was a little, I was a little shocked, but dinner was really delicious. It was a very enjoyable experience to eat at the lodge. And if you think about it, all of that food has to either be flown in or boated in. So I guess the price is unsurprising at that rate. If you plan to bring your own food for your visit, there are plenty of bear safe food caches that you're required to store your food in. You're also required to eat your food inside of the various electric fence picnic areas. This is to ensure your and the bear's safety around food. If you don't have time to camp or can't secure a spot to stay, I recommend checking out one of the many companies that offer day trips to Brooks Camp. That way you can see it for a day rather than not at all. The Valley of 10,000 Smokes bus tour is a great way to go out and see the site of the largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. The bus tours operate roughly June 5th through September 17th. The tour consists of a 23 mile drive to the valley with a park ranger that stops for scenic views and wildlife. Those interested, there is also a guided hike down to examine the ash and pumice on the valley floor. Owen and I thought that this was a tour that you had to book on site. 
Turns out that was not the case and it was completely full for both of the days that we were there. So if this is something that you're interested in doing, I would highly recommend booking ahead of time, though it is not required. The prices for the tours are as follows. The full tour with a sack lunch is $96. The full tour without a lunch is $88. And one way is $51. The one-way bus ticket is for those who are wanting to backpack in the valley of 10,000 smokes. Though I won't be getting into it today, if it's something that sparks your interest, I do recommend calling to inquire about it from the head office in King Salmon. We were hell-bent on seeing the valley of 10,000 smokes, so we had to get a little bit creative. We did that by booking a flight seeing tour of the valley of 10,000 smokes. It was in Incredible, incredible, well worth it. And we booked it through the lodge on site and we did it the day of. The flight tours are offered daily, weather permitting, and are one hour long. Though we were sad we couldn't secure a bus tour, the flight ended up giving us a chance to see this area more in depth from a unique vantage point. The flights are $260 a person with a minimum of two people per flight. They can be booked ahead of time or on site. Though Katmai National Park and Preserve is challenging to get to, it's well worth the effort so you can have a once in a lifetime experience with the bears of Brooks Falls. As we've discussed, there's a bunch of different ways to get there and stay once you get there. So we just recommend take your time do your research and figure out what options suit you best. No matter what, we just recommend that you start far enough out in advance to be sure that you have all of your accommodations sorted just in time for your trip. If Katmai National Park sparks your interest, we recommend that you check out our Alaska travel series called Lost and Found that is currently rolling out on our YouTube channel where we go to Katmai and a ton of other incredible places all throughout Alaska. We've written a blog post to go with this video that includes links to all of the different airlines, ferries, and accommodations that we've discussed in this video. And as always, it will live in the description of this video down below. Thanks again to our friends over at REI for sponsoring this video and for making it easier than ever to get the most out of our outdoor experiences. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to our channel for more helpful videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you down the road. Car's coming. Okay. The coast is clear. Does it look like I'm sweating? Because I definitely am. It is so hot in here. <laughs> okay. <sighs> and an even better... I'm gonna do that again. Wow, rambling for your vehicle at the Anchorage International Airport. Wow, so out of practice. It's gonna be a long day. And spoke with their pli 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 oh my God. This camp campground is $12 per person per night. That's a tongue twister. Try saying that 12 times fast. The sports, lo sports lodge. Wow, really struggling today. That way you can see it. I recommend from a completely unique